When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And he said, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades or hell will not or shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. It wasn't time yet for them to boldly proclaim it. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your power in this place and your mighty presence. We honor your presence, Jesus. And we thank you. Help us to never grieve your Holy Spirit. Help us to never grieve your heart by grieving the Holy Spirit. Teach us that, Lord. We do so often, so forgive us. Teach us. In your mighty name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Continuing with the series of the kingdom of God and the kingdoms of men. I'm subtitling this, Keys That Open the Kingdom of Heaven. Keys That Open the Kingdom of Heaven. So I want to give you four questions and I want you to ponder them, think about them for a moment. As I go through them. So what was Jesus referring to when he said to Peter, quote, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Why was it important for Peter to hear this from Jesus and understand it? And how were the keys going to be given And what does the kingdom of heaven look like in the earth among people when it is opened and released? This was the first time that this had ever been spoken. What Jesus said in the presence of Peter and his disciples that is, Jesus' disciples, had never been heard by human ears before. Can you imagine? Jesus saying that to you, the first human being to ever hear that, and him say that to you? It was a great night, let's put it that way. It was a great night for Peter, right? It was an awesome night. So I want to answer these questions as I go through my message today. So, when Jesus said this to Peter, it's amazing. Jesus had everything in mind that he was going to do. Peter really didn't know. He just knew the Father was working on him. And out of that working of the Father in him, he spoke out. But Jesus knew that the advancement of the gospel, souls being saved, nations being discipled, the kingdom of God advancing in the nations, and the growth of his church, his body. That's what church means, by the way. Church is not a building, but 
His body is in a building, right? Just like my body lives in my home just a few moments away from here. That's why buildings are good. But the building isn't the church. But the growth of the Lord's church was on the Lord's mind when he said this to Peter. And understanding the keys of the kingdom, why they are given, and what it actually looks like, that is the kingdom of God and the earth, are so very important. And how do those keys release and unlock heaven? Everything rides on this moment with Peter. Everything depends on Peter right now. And the revelation that the Father was giving him. Because the keys... As Jesus knows, and Peter doesn't understand, but Jesus understood that the keys of the kingdom that he had and that he was going to obtain through, the death, through his own death, burial, and resurrection, taking away from the devil the keys of death, hell, and the grave that the enemy had stolen from our first parents, Adam and Eve, by their sin and rebellion. Jesus was about to take those keys back. And so he was making sure that someone among his disciples understood. Someone had to understand it. And Peter piped up. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad for people that pipe up every now and then? Makes you feel pretty good when you're a little bit shy. But the keys unlock the culture of heaven and the earth. The keys of the kingdom release the culture of heaven. We don't want the kingdom of darkness, right? We don't want the sin and the rebellion and the brokenness that that brings, which had reigned from Adam. It had reigned from Adam over all the human race. Death and sin. Over all the human race, death had reigned. And Jesus comes as a babe in a manger. He grows up in the ministry of Jesus begins to happen. And as we understand, Jesus proclaimed like John the Baptist, his forerunner. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Repent, that's all you have to do. And you get to enter into the kingdom of God. You get to enter into the kingdom of God. All you have to do is repent. Come, everybody, come. Everybody's welcome. Everyone's welcome in the kingdom of God. Because the Father loves you all. I'm here to announce that. His kingdom is here. And He is going to crush the kingdom of darkness. He is going to crush Satan's kingdom that has bound you. Come in. Come into the kingdom of God. Don't delay. Because when you step into the kingdom of God through the born again experience and faith in the Lord Jesus, humble repentance and brokenness. Boom. Can I just say boom? The power of God. The power of God. The power of God. Breaks everything of darkness off of your life. Frees your mind and opens your spirit to understand who God is and understand his ways and his love for you. So everything rides on this moment with Peter. It's an amazing moment, and people just kind of all they want to do is like. 
kind of get through that. Tell me what the keys are. Tell me what the keys are. Well, I'm going to tell you in a moment just two of them. I mean, understand, there's many more than two. Most of the time, you know I'm preaching seven and eight points, but today you get two. <laughs> keys of the kingdom of heaven. So believe it or not, I believe that you do, the growth of the church and God's kingdom still depends on understanding the keys that Jesus still holds and he gives to anyone and everyone, anyone and everyone who truly wants to know what they are and how to operate in them and, and, and truly bring the culture of heaven and release the power of God in the earth in a hostile world that the devil has taken over by man giving him the keys. And so man... Jesus is giving back the keys to man to take back the earth. Somebody say amen. amen. One heart at a time. So the growth of the church and the, the advancement of the gospel still depends on understanding the keys and why they exist, what they are for, and how to implement them. So when Jesus referred to the keys of the kingdom, this is what he's saying, and it should go up. There we go. Jesus is referring to this. He is referring to the specific things his disciples must do to release God's dominion, his love and grace, mercy and authority, angelic hosts, everybody say amen. Amen. And God's power in the earth for the benefit, everybody say benefit, of those in darkness. The darkness of sin and in Satan's deception and Satan's bondage. See, the keys are just not for me. It's so that I can start doing the work of Jesus and the ministry of Jesus in the earth. So Adam and Eve, like I said, lost the keys of the kingdom. They lost them here on earth in the Garden of Eden, if you can believe that. I mean, they had a perfect situation going. Somebody say amen. Let's face it. Don't eat of that tree. Eat eat of all the other trees. Isn't that just like us? We're just like our father and mother. Eat of everything else, but don't even touch that. Because he gives us free will, right? I won't even go into that. So you are led by the Spirit of God, not by your flesh. When he says don't touch it, don't touch it, right? Because you are being led by the Spirit, not your flesh. Your flesh goes, your flesh wants to touch it. But don't you touch it. Because you are a woman and a man of God, child of the living God. So they lost the keys. And so now the Son of God, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, would take back the keys by His obedience. Somebody say amen. How many know that obedience is what brings the glory? Humble obedience. By His faith, by His resurrection. And He restored them to His followers. This is what Jesus is doing. He's saying to Peter, I'm going to give you something that's going to revolutionize the world. And destroy the powers of darkness. The keys of the kingdom of heaven are not given to everyone or anyone, just anyone. Let me assure you, God wants to give them to everyone and anyone. But He cannot. He cannot give them to everyone. And there's reason for it. He's reserving the keys of the kingdom of God for fully devoted followers of Him. I'm not talking about perfection here. All of us are imperfect. We do things, we say things that the Holy Spirit convicts us. of. Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that, Lord. I shouldn't have done that. All right, so we're not perfect. But we are devoted to Him because we are listening to Him and our heart is fixed on Him. 
and we want to please him. So he only gives them to fully devoted followers of his. Not half-hearted. Not well, you know, I don't know. I really believe in Jesus, you know. Or, I don't know about his church. No fully devoted followers who love his church, become a part of it, and leaders, and humble themselves, and create a culture of honor among the brethren. We prefer the brethren. But devoted followers he gives the keys to. Why? Because with great power comes great responsibility. Because the Lord wants to be represented well and honored in the earth. Among nations and among people. He will not be dishonored. If he feels dishonored, he will leave. He's married to the backslider, yes. He's everywhere at all times. But His glory presence, the keys and the power of God that He gives us, it won't be. It won't be around. But He will love you in your backsliding, in your backsliding and in your backslidden condition. How many understand that? He will love you. He will love you, love you, love you all the way. Wherever you want to go, he will love you, but you will not receive the keys. You will not be able to build with him. In fact, you'll tear down. And he'll love you all the while. But he will not be pleased. And you, if you backslide, You reap what you sow. That's not good for sowing the wrong seed. But with the keys, we're able to build the kingdom, advance the kingdom, build his house, build his church. Because, and he gives these keys to fully devoted followers of his. Why? Because these keys cannot be earned. He gives them to us. And just because I'm a fully devoted follower of Jesus, there may be things in my life that I don't see and He's not giving me everything that He wants to give me. And so I need to pay attention to what He's saying because the keys are given and gladly given by Jesus to those who fully understand. Not just want them, but fully understand what He is about and what He teaches and how He moves and what He wants to do among people because people are at the center of His heart. Even the people that you don't like Jesus loves them. So that's why we don't always get the keys of the kingdom because we hold bias in here and we got all kinds of things going on. Jesus wants you to be engulfed in his love and then you're going to see some wonderful things happen. But these keys, so I want you to pay attention closely to these two points and I just want you to relax and not think about lunch. I want you to understand what I'm about to tell you. See, Jesus came, it says in 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that He might destroy the works of the devil. And so, it had to begin in the heart of human beings because the work of the devil penetrated everything that human beings were. 
Because they were fallen by nature. And so, Jesus had to start in the heart. Fortunately for us, the Holy Spirit is all powerful and He can penetrate our heart. He can penetrate our mind. He can read our minds. The devil cannot read your mind. And He can only penetrate your heart if you allow Him to. And He can only influence your life if you open, him, open yourself up by your words and your actions. You cannot be touched by the devil unless you open yourself up and you have... You allow doors to open to Him through anger and bitterness and unforgiveness. Whatever is not of the kingdom. So if you operate in those, it's going to be hard for you to receive the keys of the kingdom that I'm going to share with you. So are you ready? The keys of the kingdom of heaven. The culture of heaven. When I say the kingdom of heaven, I mean the dominion of God, but the culture of heaven. How many understand in heaven all there is is praise and glory to God? How many understand all there is is the power and the presence of God? How many want that on earth? Jesus said, pray that way. Pray that way. My kingdom come. My will be done. He wants us to pray, Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done. He is saying to you, my kingdom come. He's prophesying to you. He wants you to say it. Your kingdom come, Lord. Your will be done here in my family, in my church, my community, my region. Key number one, keys of the kingdom of heaven. This is important. The first key of the kingdom is the revelation of Jesus. So let me explain that. Some of you are like, I, I have that. I have that. Hallelujah. I'm on target, Lord. I, I'm with you. I hear that. Woo. It's like a rocket ship ready to go off right here. Whisper to your neck, I have that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. See, this revelation, let me tell you how precious this revelation is. Precious to the Father. Precious to the Father. Because He gave Jesus to us. And people are blind to it. They were blind to it in his day. The revelation is birthed. <clears throat> the revelation begins. The revelation of Jesus, the Son of God, is birthed. It begins in your innermost being. It has to begin there. In your spirit, man, this first revelation, this first key, the revelation of Jesus. And the Father Himself, listen to this, the Father Himself, the Father in heaven, the God of all creation, the One who sits upon His throne right now, ruling and reigning in all of His glory, touched your heart. If you have this revelation, the Father worked in you. The finger of God touched you. Right here. Right there. And awakened something in you that you did not have. It was a miracle. Because while you were in darkness, while we were yet sinners... Christ died for us. While we were in sin and could not see and were helpless and were hopelessly lost, 
bound in darkness and bound by Satan and on our way to a hell that God never created for you or me, but for the devil and his angels. But because of our sin nature, right? We're hopeless. Oh, but the revelation. Everybody say the revelation. Oh, the revelation. The revelation. So this is what began to happen. Remember this? This was before you were saved, right? So the Father himself began to work on you. He began to open your heart and open your mind. Before you were ever saved, before you ever confessed Jesus as Savior, before you ever opened your heart and repented, your Heavenly Father was already working on you because He loved you. He saw you from the beginning. He formed you in your mother's womb. He was working on you, and He was working in you. And He was tenderly moving you and shedding His light, the light of the glorious gospel. In a sinful heart, because that's what God does. He brings light in darkness. When He created the earth, He brought light out of darkness. Somebody say amen. When he recreated you, he spoke light into into your darkened heart. And he tenderly moved in this way and began to open and unveil to you this revelation of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ right in your sin and right in your darkness. This is why it's a key to the kingdom. Because it's got to be deep. It's got to go so deep to the very core of your being. You must be born again. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 says this, If our gospel is veiled or hidden, it is veiled to those who are perishing. That's not a good feeling to me. Or to the Father, by the way. Whose mind, listen to this, this is why they're perishing. It's because the God of this age, the God of this world, the devil, has blinded them. And so you and I are sent to help them unveil themselves from Satan's darkness. Because that was me. And my brother sitting right here and his precious wife began to talk to me about the gospel of Jesus Christ as a young teenager. My darkness began to change by the power of God. How many know that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation? It still is the power of God. That's why we must share it. Because without that seed going into the hearts of our friends, our loved ones, our neighbors, our work associates, the light cannot come. Now God may use something else. If if you're not going to let Him use you in that way, He'll use anything, right? He'll use the radio. He'll use people that He's raised up on the radio. But I like Him when He uses me. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the glorious gospel, the light of of the gospel, of the glory of Christ. Isn't that wonderful? Who is the image of God should shine on them. So, he began to draw you, and this is what he did. He was drawing you to himself by revealing his son, Jesus Christ. John 6, verse 44 says this, No one can come to me, Jesus said, unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up in the last days. If you truly and earnestly believe, that is you, each one of you, that Jesus is the promised Messiah, sent from your heavenly Father, you're very close to receiving the kingdom of God. 
But just believing that he is Messiah, many people believe that he is Messiah. Many people serve him because they believe he is Messiah, but there's a second key to the kingdom that I'm going to share with you in a moment, but let me finish this thought. If you believe that he is Messiah, there is a miracle happening, or maybe you've already gone to the second step and the second key. Jesus said to Peter, and I love this, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. Even your faith in God originated with your heavenly Father and his divine work of grace in you while you are still in your sins and in your darkness. Ephesians 2.8 says this. Listen to this. By grace you are saved, right? Through faith. That and that not of yourselves. I mean, understand grace and faith are not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And so, the first key of the kingdom is the revelation of Jesus. The second key of the kingdom of heaven is very much like it, but it goes deeper. Are you ready? The second key is the deep, earnest conviction and confession of faith from your heart. Is it still deep? Or have you ever done that before? You're going to get an opportunity to do this here in a moment. We're going to open the Come to Christ station, if you've never given your life to Jesus in this way, earnest conviction. But it's also a confession, right? If we believe in our heart, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, right, and believe in our heart that God has raised Him from the dead, what does it say? You shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from sin. Saved from hell. Saved from devil's from the devil's snare. And so out of this, out of your revelation, the first key to the kingdom comes this deep revelation, knowledge, this confession of Jesus and who He is. Who He is. Out of your revelation of the Son of God comes a bold confession. That He is Messiah. He is the promised one. The Son of the living God. And heaven comes in your heart. The Holy Spirit comes in. And out goes the devil. Everybody say, spank the devil. And give God praise. Spank the devil. And give God praise. Oh, that was weak. You got even weaker. You said it pretty good the first time. Say it again. Spank the devil. And give God praise. Spank the devil. And give God praise. That's what Abby, that was part of her, her precious. I did a wedding last Sunday. Stand up there, Zach. Is Abby here? Oh, bless her heart. All right. She said, she said, Zach, I promise to do this as your wife. I promise to do that. And Zach, I promise to spank the devil and give God praise. Is that like awesome? How many want your wives spanking the devil and giving God praise? Amen. Amen. So that's where that confession, see, when you have this confession of who Jesus is, not even death alarms you. Shoo, hallelujah, that was, thank you, Jesus, because he conquered it. 
If you believe in Jesus, you believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. Now, this body may expire, but the moment, the moment my heart stops beating, I'm with Jesus. Just like I was down here, but in greater glory. Your confession, your spoken declaration, boldly, from your heart, unashamedly, is a powerful key that opens the kingdom of heaven in your life. Boom! Splash! Hallelujah! Tears flowing! Hey, somebody, I gotta tell somebody! Who can I tell? Who can I tell? I know who I'll tell. I tell my friends at work. You did what? <laughs> Gave my life to Jesus. I'm getting baptized next Sunday. You want to come? Remember how excited you were? If you've never been that excited, if you've never been that excited, the Lord wants you to be. It's not too late to be. It's not too late to be that excited. He wants you to be that excited. It's good news, everybody. You want to come to church with me? No. Are you kidding? Those days are over. That's not the way we behave when we're so excited about the keys of the kingdom that I just told you about here. You mean I got the keys of the kingdom, God? These are the first two, and I'm telling you, they unlock a whole lot of blessing. Hey, somebody. They, they, they set my life straight. Deep. Earnest. Heart change. Transformation. Boom. Everybody say, boom. Woo. What just happened here? Is this what they call born again, pastor? Yes. Woo! 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 Hallelujah. Your husband or wife says, honey, what's wrong with you? My mother-in-law looked at me and said, you look different. I said, I am. I may understand what I'm saying. See, this is what I'm talking about. You know, <laughs> let me unlock you from all of your bondage. That's not how we do it. We become the light. And guess what? The light, people don't look direct, don't look directly into the light. What does the light do? The light shines on people so they can see. I don't want people seeing me. I want them seeing their condition in the sight of God so they can repent. And receive the glorious Jesus that's standing right next to them, knocking on their heart's door. I want them to see him knocking on their heart's door. He's standing right next to every sinner. He's pouring out his spirit upon all flesh, sinner and saint alike. Acts chapter 2:17.
I want them to see him. So when I'm around, when I'm around lost people, what am I going to do? I'm just going to sign, I'm just going to shine the light. And how do you do that? By being a friend of sinners like Jesus is. Romans 10, 9 and 11 through 11. In fact, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. See, we just gloss over that. If I just confess, if I just, no, this isn't easy believism. This is glorious believism. This is deep. This goes to your very core. Just shake it all down. Shake it together. Let it run up. Shake it together and let it just push out everything. Now, if I just confessed him, he said he'd come in. Well, I don't really feel him, Pastor. The king of heaven just came in your heart. Let's do this again. Retake. Everybody say retake. Anybody need retakes here? You're about to get one. Hallelujah. It's okay. I had to have a retake. I had to have a retake. But if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God's raised him from the dead, I'll be saved. Listen to this, verse 10. For with the heart one believes, man believes unto what? Righteousness. And with the mouth, what? Confession is made unto salvation. So when I declare boldly, Jesus, save me. Jesus, you saved me. Jesus, come in. Jesus, fill my heart. Forgive me of my sin. I confess and repent. Guess what he does? And I'm meaning it in my heart. He comes in and he obliterates the darkness. Woo! This is the key. You can't have the keys of the kingdom that you want. I mean, want the keys? Oh, about half of you. Good. Hallelujah. That's, that's, actually, that's not bad. But I think Jesus wants a little more than that. How many want the keys of the king? All right. How many, I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm going to ask you, if you want the keys of the kingdom, I want you to stand up and I want you to, I want you to dance like this. One full circle. Now, stay standing, stay standing. So, if you have the keys of the kingdom, I want you to stand, keep standing or stand, and I want you to twirl three times. And then I want you to give the Lord a big shout. All right. All right, you can sit down. Now, just checking. Because that's what Jesus is doing to Peter right now. He's assessing Peter's heart. What, what did I just do? I assessed your heart. That's all. And the Lord's looking. He's seeing. Right? If you need to go to the restroom, take a little potty break, you can. Come on back. Hey, I, I believe me. I, I understand that. The older I get, oh my goodness, this old body, I don't get it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Felicia. My confession was wrong, wasn't it? Forgive me, Lord. I am being renewed. This body is renewed like it's youth. Hallelujah. Thank you. Felicia, check you. she'll check you at the door. All your shame like the Father, she will check it at the door. It doesn't belong here in the Father's house, right? Didn't we sing that song this morning? So Jesus is assessing you. Here we go. I'm not done. We're almost done. Everybody say, he's almost done. But Jesus is assessing Peter. And he is helping his disciples assess their conviction. Your conviction is everything in this hour. What is your conviction about him? Who do you say... Jesus is. Jesus is assessing and helping his disciples assess 
their convictions. He knows what's in their heart. He's wanting to hear it out of their mouth. And he's assessing their conviction about him. Isn't it interesting? He's assessing their faith in him. And if they truly are walking in the Father's revelation, remember, the first key is the Father's revelation of who Jesus is. And so now he's bringing them in to a confession of who he is. Because everything rides on this. Everything rides on advancing the kingdom this way. He's assessing their heart. Why? They're about to witness something that's going to be very painful. They're about to witness the crucifixion of Jesus. Now, they don't understand that Jesus has to be crucified. They're hoping that he's going to Jerusalem now to set up the kingdom of God and remove Rome from occupying and hurting the people. So everything hinges on this moment. And so let me say to you, each one of you, God is giving you a moment right now. And if you've already, if you're already dancing and shouting with these keys in your hand, you know when you dance and shout with the keys, it, it, it irritates the devil so bad. That's why I want you to dance. They're rattling and they're just clinging and clanging. They're big ones too. I mean, they, they're not these small little keys like in a locker or something. I mean, they're big. They're big. They, nobody can hold these keys but the child of the living God. They're so big, the devil hates when you dance. They're, they're, they're like gongs in his ears. Remember I say boom. Hi, Abby. How are you? You just came in, didn't you? Hallelujah. It's okay. I just told him about your vows. Yeah, it was awesome. And Zach, I'm, I'm going to do this as your wife, and I'm going to do that. And that was so sweet. I'm tearing up. I mean, I'm crying. I got, I got the hanky out, all of that. And she said, Zach, I just, and I'm saying it for you because I just told everybody. And Zach, I promise to spank the devil and give God praise. I mean, that was authority right there. My family was like, what? What? Because they, they don't know Jesus. That's right. They will. They will. Because she carries the keys of the kingdom. And man, the, like gongs in his ears, right? Everything is hinging on this moment. Of course, Jesus knows what's going to happen. They're not going to forsake him. There's going to be one that really messes up bad. But God is giving you a moment right now to reassess. Everybody say, Lord, assess me. Assess my heart. See, your immediate and eternal future depends on these two things, these two keys. The revelation of the Father Himself of who Jesus is. And if you know who He is, the Father has already worked on you. And then the deep, earnest confession that Jesus is who He says He is. He is Messiah. And you believe in Him. And you receive Him. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. And He comes in and He breaks the powers of darkness. The growth of the church, the advancement of the kingdom of God depends upon your confession, your earnest confession, because if you're not willing to confess before him, you're certainly not going to be willing to confess him before men. Did you get that? The culture of heaven in your heart, in your family, in your church, in your community depend 
on that key, unlocking it. See, when you start walking in the revelation of who Jesus is, and you start confessing him wherever you go, when you start talking about who he is and saying who he is to him, when you start operating in the confession world, when you start declaring the things of God out of your mouth, how many know that you have to speak to those things that be not as though they were? It all begins with who you believe can't just start spouting off words. Oh, I'm confessing. I'm declaring. That's God. Come on. How many know deep? Everybody say deep. deep. Right? So are you going to live for Jesus or not? That's what Jesus was saying. Are you going to live for me or not? Because here we go. You've been walking with me, seeing a lot of miracles, people raised from the dead, fishing, uh, uh, p- uh, bread multiply. You've been seeing me walk on water. I saved you, Peter. You were about to drown. You know, I, are you going to live for me or not? Because this is what it's going to take. It's going to take a revelation from the Father, and it's going to take a confession. Now, are you willing to live for Jesus or not? Are you willing to love what he loves? Or are you only going to live for your own dreams? Now, he wants you to dream. I'm not saying that in a bad way. They can't be number one. They got to be way down there. Because if you seek first the kingdom of God, guess what? He'll add all these things to you, right? Sure, Rabbi. Did I just say that, Abby? Sure. I can't wait to watch this, man. I'm... Hallelujah, I don't even know half the things I've said today. (laughs) Woo! So how was Peter going to become a world changer for God like he became? How was Peter going to become a stable, foundational rock that that could not be moved in the Lord's church? See, that's what he's looking for. That's what Jesus is looking for. Stable rocks! foundational stones in the building of God. Well, I don't know if I want to go to church. I don't know if I want to be a part of that church. They go too long on Sunday morning. I mean, that's why God created eternity so that we could just, boom, we could just be with him all the time. By getting a heart change, that's how he became a world changer. By getting his heart set ablaze with the revelation of the king of the kingdom. See, the process is the same for you and me as it was for Peter and his first disciples. So let us set the record straight this morning. You and I are just as vital as any disciples in history. Jesus is building and still building a spiritual superstructure called His church, His ecclesia, that is going to be seen by all in the world and in the world to come. What did Peter say? Remember, when Jesus asked him, who do you say that I am? Peter said, you are the Christ. You are the anointed one. You are the Messiah of God, the Son of God, which Peter was confessing that you are equal with God. You are God. There was a good brother who had some bad teaching that I, he walked with me for seven years before he, he had to go to another church and he, I don't understand. I always looked at God the Father up here and Jesus like way down here. I said, that's okay. The Lord is going to teach you. You just walk with us here, brother. The Lord is going to teach you. And then the Holy Spirit, I don't know what to, how, to, how to put the three together. Oh, you won't have to. Just walk with us. The Father is going to give you the revelation of who he is. Don't don't fret over those things. Let him reveal himself to you. We can't understand it with the carnal mind, right? See, when everyone else had it wrong, Peter had it right. 
Peter declared to Jesus who he believed Jesus to be. This is very important. Peter spoke out of the revelation of the Father, and this is what Jesus said. It says Jesus spoke also. So the, Holy, the Father, the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit was speaking to Peter about who Jesus was. And so Jesus confirmed what the Father was saying because it says Jesus spoke also. And he confirmed that he is the Messiah. Because he says it at the end. He says, Blessed are you, Peter. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven has revealed it to you. See, his bold declaration to Jesus was saying that I... I have received the Father's revelation, and now you are confirming it, Jesus. How many understand that Jesus loves to confirm who He is in us? And so when He confirms who He is in us, He loves to hear us tell Him who He is. Somebody say amen. So in your praise and in your worship and in your prayer time, if you're you're at a loss with what to say in the presence of God, just tell Him who He is. He loves when you tell Him who He is because it's a confession out of your heart. Jesus loves to hear you tell Him who He is. He also loves to hear you tell Him what you believe about Him and what He does for you. You are the Christ. You are the Anointed One, Lord. You are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Declarations exalting who Jesus is in you And to you, encourages you. Your own declarations of who He is. Your own confessions out of your mouth to Him. Encourage your heart and your mind. David, remember King David before he was king? He had all the tribulation. What did he do? He encouraged himself in the Lord. Nobody else would encourage him. You'll come here and you'll get encouraged. Let me assure you of that. But David had to encourage himself in the Lord. So you got to learn that too. But when you make declarations exalting Jesus, who he is in you, who he is to you, to all of those around you, I mean, understand it chases the devil away. It chases him away. Remember when Jesus was in the wilderness, he was going through the temptation of the devil. Remember? Finally, the last word, it is written, Jesus said, the devil had to leave and the angels came and ministered to him. How many know that the angels are here to assist you? The angels are in this room. The presence of God is in this room. The angels are here to assist you. Everybody say hallelujah. I know I said I'm almost done. A moment ago, but I am done now. Where are are the worshipers? Come on. So as they're coming, let me just give you a few things. These two keys are great and mighty. They're the very foundation of your confession and your love for Jesus and your life. Next week, I'm going to share just a few more of the keys. All right, are you ready for that? But these are the big ones. Woo, hallelujah. Like one, a keychain, like, like a hula hoop. Everybody do this. Hear that, devil? I got the keys of the kingdom. Great keys open. Open heaven. See, all God wants us to do is just do what he says. Confess him. Believe in him. Operate in that faith and in that joy. And guess what? Share the good news. The culture of heaven. I walk with the culture of heaven now. I'm not going to operate in worry and fear. I operate in faith not going to operate in fear. I'm not going to let the fear 
that's in the world and the hate and the division spoil my peace in the Lord I'm going to be a light somebody say amen, amen. and we're going to bring the kingdom of God because God's shaking the kingdoms of men Kim Wetland gave us that word he didn't know what I was preaching on the kingdom of God is shaking and destroying the kingdom of Satan. Shaking and removing the kingdoms of nations. The people that oppress others. Because the kingdom of God is all about people. It's all about people. It's setting people free. It's not showing how powerful I am with these keys, right? about unlocking heaven so people can experience heaven. So I got to learn that, Lord. I got to learn more, Jesus. I want everyone to stand. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer. And if you're in the building, after we open the prayer stations, I want you to come to the come to Christ station and there'll be somebody there to help you. But pray this prayer. I want everyone to pray it. Those of you watching as well. Say this with me, Lord Jesus, I believe in you with all my heart. Forgive me of my sins. They are many. I forgive those who have sinned against me. I forgive them. Lord Jesus, would you come into my heart and fill me with your love, fill me with your life, fill me with your power, God, to overcome all my temptations. You are the overcomer. Teach me to be the overcomer you've created me to be. I will be, and I will become more than a conqueror through you, Jesus. So come in and fill my heart. I will live for you all my days. Fill me with joy. Fill me with your peace. Fill me with your boldness. I will not be ashamed of who you are, Jesus. I will confess you before men. And you will confess me before my heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. I receive you now. Amen. So I want us to all do a declaration. And then we'll open the prayer stations. Are you ready? All right, now say it like you mean it. So here we go, right? Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me the revelation of Jesus Christ. I believe in you, Jesus. You are the Son of the living God. You are the promised Messiah of the prophets and of Moses. You are the King of all kings and Lord of all lords. You reign and rule from your throne in heaven everything you do is good everything you are is good thank you Jesus thank you for your love thank you for your provision for your protection for your friendship and for your grace. I will live for you all my days until I take my last breath. I will love you and love what you love and do what you do. All for your glory all for your honor 
In your mighty name, Lord Jesus, I pray. Amen.